Hello guys, how are you all? I hope you have revised yesterday's notes, right? Have you revised yesterday's notes, guys? Yeah, obviously I did not send you the PDF yesterday, right? I did not send you the PDF yesterday. Actually, my plan was so even after completing today's lecture, right? And one more class is there. So after that, completely the upper limb notes, I'll be sending it to you in the Telegram group. Because you will be confused it because there will be number of notes of different faculties that will be coming in the telegram group. So it will be really difficult for you. So at a time I will send one PDF. Okay. So good evening Kishore. Good evening Cricket. Kamran. Good evening Kamran. Arshad Ali. Sure Arshad. I will send you the notes. Hi Bhagyasri. Hi. Hello. Bruce Wayne. Hi Bruce. Good evening. Suheb Ahmad. Good evening Suheb. Uh, Piyush Sharma, hi Piyush, love Kumar, Kamran, I'm fine Kamran, thank you so much, how are you, hi Pankaj, cricket, cricket, micro ka lecture, bohat, bohat jaldi lunga mein, thik hai? good evening, good evening Joshna, good evening all of you, so let's, let's start guys, okay, we have a little more topics to discuss today, okay, so again I'm telling you, one very important thing is that take a pen and paper, sit down and write whatever I'm teaching you. And from your side, I want 100% response on whatever I'm asking. Okay. But from my side, today, you know, today the topics will be so interesting. I'll be teaching you the muscles of upper limb. The complete muscles of upper limb I'll be teaching you. Okay. So I know muscles of upper limb are really, really difficult. I will try to teach as easy as possible. Okay. But I want your full attention. Uh, for you to understand this lecture. So, if you are okay with this, then let's start, guys. Are you all okay? Yes, Malar Viji, we will even discuss the nerves as well. Along with the muscles, we will discuss the nerves, obviously. Right. So, let's get started, guys. Yesterday, in the yesterday's class, we have discussed about the mammary gland, right? So, one very important thing I told you about mammary gland is that mammary gland is a modified sweat gland of apocrine activity. So, this thing you know. I have already told you that mammary gland all the way it extends from second to the sixth rib. Right? And this is the mammary gland. We will divide uh, Tanishka. Head and neck lectures are coming subsequently after the upper limb. End, okay? Saifali, thank you so much. I am fine. Right. So, mammary gland is divided into four quadrants. From the exterior lecture itself, you can find it on just brushing it up. Okay. It is divided into four quadrants. So, upper there are two quadrants, lower there are two quadrants. This yellow color shade, whatever is there, this quadrant, this is the most common quadrant that is prone to breast cancers. Okay. Mostly breast cancers develop in this field. Okay. Why? I will tell you in today's lecture. Okay. And the muscles. You know that we discussed yesterday only pectoralis, major, serratus anterior and external lobby, right? So, where did we stop yesterday? We actually stopped regarding the lymph blood supply. Right? We have discussed even the blood supply. We have stopped near the lymphatic system. Now, I don't want you to comment. Just concentrate on whatever I am teaching you. Okay? Look here. When it comes to the lymphatic system, When it comes to the lymphatics, when it comes to the lymphatics, in the breast region, we have got two types of lymphatics. One is called superficial, another one is called deep. Okay. So, we have got two different types of lymph vessels. What are those two different types? We have got superficial, we have got deep lymph vessels. Okay. Superficial as well as deep lymph vessels. Now, let us see within the breast, what are the different types of lymph nodes that are located. This is very very important yesterday itself i told you how important it is it okay and and one more thing is that today we shall also be doing some mcqs as well okay right look here now the lymph nodes on the breast guys look here here exactly which you can see from the camera here right in front of me these lymph nodes here are called as anterior lymph nodes okay because they are anterior to you back of that will be posterior obviously this is anterior then this is posterior Okay, then what is this one called as this is away from my body. So, if there are any lymph nodes here, these are called as lateral lymph nodes, isn't it? So, look here, what I am trying to tell you is that here we have got anterior lymph nodes. 
these three lymph nodes are anterior just back of that here we have got posterior group of lymph nodes okay and away from the body it means here we have got lateral group of lymph nodes okay so what are the group of lymph nodes a b c right a stands for anterior group of lymph nodes b stands for posterior group of lymph nodes c stands for lateral group of lymph nodes or lateral lymph nodes okay now all of you look here all of you look here all these lymph nodes if i'm drawing it like this if i'm drawing it like this all of these lymph nodes are pointing upwards right they are pointing upwards they are looking at some point there so this is the point here right so why i am telling you this because here also you have got a lymph node which is exactly in the center that is called as central lymph node okay that is called as central lymph node central lymph node are you all understanding it dr bendek thank you so much i'm fine dr bendek i'll tell you about sentinel lymph node later on okay i'll tell you about that next important thing is that in the apex in the apex we have got a lymph node like this that is completely on the top apex so you call this as apical lymph node this is called as apical lymph node okay so all these lymph nodes anterior lymph node posterior lymph node lateral lymph node central lymph node and apical lymph node all these five lymph nodes which area are they located guys they are located in the axillary region so that is the reason why all these lymph nodes are called as axillary lymph nodes so they are going to ask you a definite question on this what are the axillary lymph nodes all of the following are the axillary lymph nodes except so they might give you one of this and skip one of them okay next important thing next important thing is that you even have a lymph node one above the clavicle one below the clavicle so if there is a lymph node above the clavicle you call it as supraclavicular if there is a lymph node below the clavicle you call it as infraclavicular so we even we even have supraclavicular we even have infraclavicular infraclavicular right next lymph node next lymph node is that we have got one lymph node here on the deltoid region right so exactly here on the deltoid region we have got a lymph node this is called as deltoid lymph node what is this lymph node called this is called as deltoid lymph node okay next important thing yes show up pdf will be available i want you to concentrate here next important thing is that you have got a lymph node on the inner sides of the mammary gland this is the mammary gland on the inner side of the mammary gland exactly here you have got a lymph node right on the inner side of the mammary gland here you have got a group of lymph nodes even on the opposite side also the same thing right on the inner side you have got a lymph node so these are called as internal mammary nodes what are these called these are called as internal mammary nodes these are called internal mammary nodes and finally we are left over with only two lymph nodes very good bruce we are left over with only two lymph nodes one lymph node is located over here right that is below the diaphragm another lymph node is located here so this lymph node which is located on the back here right this is called as posterior intercostal lymph node right this lymph node is called as posterior intercostal lymph node and which is located under the diaphragm under the diaphragm this under the diaphragm this is called as subdiaphragmatic lymph node subdiaphragmatic lymph node subdiaphragmatic lymph node okay all of you clear with this so far right and just remember one last point along with subdiaphragmatic there is also one more lymph node here that is located below the peritoneum you know you have got parietal and visceral peritoneum deep inside below the peritoneum you have got this lymph node this is called as subperitoneal lymph node so it is very 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 easy to remember guys subperitoneal subdiaphragmatic they are below the diaphragm posterior intercostal and when it comes to axillary we have got anterior we have got posterior we have got lateral all of them are looking towards central okay 
and obviously here we have got apical. After that above clavicle one, below clavicle one, in the deltoid one, that is it finish. We are done with the lymph nodes. Clear? Now I will be telling you how these lymph nodes will drain. Okay? But before that, one very important thing is that yesterday class I told you that this center part, this center region is called as nipple. The center region is called as nipple. Surrounding the nipple, you have got what? This, this region surrounding the nipple, which is hyperpigmented, this is called as areola. I told you this. Now, the same picture I am showing it to you here. Right? You see, center, you call it as a nipple. Surrounding the nipple, all this area is called as areola. Now, in this areola, you can see some plexus over there. You can see some plexus in the areola. So, this plexus in the areola is called as sub areolar plexus, sub areolar plexus of sappy. Very, very, very important, guys. I want you to remember it at any cost. This is called as sub areolar plexus of sappy. What is this sub areolar plexus of sappy is doing? It is collecting all the lymph, whatever is located in the nipple region, whatever is located in the breast region, whatever is located in that sub areolar region or areola, all that lymph is collected and that lymph goes all the way and it drains into these group of lymph nodes called as axillary group of lymph nodes. I told you what are axillary group of lymph nodes, right? So, they are draining into axillary lymph nodes, clear? So, the only question which they are going to ask you is that sub areolar plexus of sap, it drains into which lymph nodes? It drains into axillary lymph nodes. Guys, still here, are you clear? Before I progress to the next one, be fast guys, be fast. Are you all clear, sir? Fine, fine. Bruce Wayne, fine. Very good. Right? My main focus is on first and third year students. Right? So, if there are any first and third year students over here, uh, I am asking you that, uh, are you understanding this thing? Yeah? Very good. So, I want first and third years to comment. Very good. Fine. Nice. Now, let us go on to the same thing. So, these are the lymph nodes, you know, right? See, here we have got, here we have got internal mammary lymph nodes, supraclavicular lymph nodes, infraclavicular lymph nodes. Uh, let us say this is deltoid lymph node or uh, sorry, central lymph node, right? We have got lateral, we have got uh, anterior, we have got posterior, this is central, this is deltoid, right? So, all these lymph nodes are here itself. Now, the important thing, all of you have to know. Now, open your two ears and listen to what I am telling here, guys. Very, very, very high yield point. If I am dividing the breast into four quadrants, if I am dividing the breast into four quadrants, look what is happening. The upper lateral quadrant, right? So, we have got lower quadrants, upper quadrants. In upper quadrants, this is the medial quadrant, this is the lateral quadrant, right? This is the medial quadrant, this is the lateral quadrant. So, in the upper lateral quadrant, look here very carefully, all the lymph, all the lymph from the upper lateral quadrant drains into this group of lymph nodes. What is this? The axillary group of lymph nodes like this. Okay. First, it is draining into anterior. It is also draining into posterior. And next, what is happening? The posterior drains into lateral. And all these three, anterior, posterior, lateral. Let me write it down. Anterior posterior lateral all of these all of these they drain into the central group of lymph nodes okay central group of lymph nodes now all the lymph in the central group of lymph nodes it drains into the deltoid group of lymph node from the deltoid group of lymph node it drains into the epical group of lymph node from the epical group of lymph node it drains into the supraclavicular lymph node from the supraclavicular lymph node it drains into your venous system your veins, your subclavian vein and all. Clear so far? Have you understood guys? From the upper lateral quadrant, how it is going? So, can I tell you one thing that upper lateral quadrant is covering all your axillary lymph nodes? First point, upper lateral quadrant covers your axillary lymph nodes. 
axillary lymph nodes guys attendance marked okay fine uh, i want you to answer here upper lateral what is this upper lateral quadrant it drains completely into the axillary group of lymph nodes okay second important thing second important thing is that look here very carefully coming to the medial quadrants the medial upper medial lower quadrant both these medial quadrants they drain into the internal mammary lymph nodes where do they drain internal mammary lymph nodes so can i write it like this the median quadrants both of them they drain into internal mammary lymph nodes clear so two things you have to keep clear two things you have to keep clear the lateral quadrants drain into axillary the medial quadrants drain into internal mammary okay then what about these two lower quadrants here very very simple i already told you that you even have a plexus here right what is this subperitoneal lymph nodes this is also called as subperitoneal lymph nodes or subperitoneal lymph plexus lymph plexus you can also call like this so occasionally sometimes or let us say 3 to 4% of the time the lower quadrant will drain into this subperitoneal lymph plexus the lower quadrant will drain into subperitoneal okay so from this i will tell you one very important thing that 75% of lymph 75% of lymph of your breast is drained into axillary lymph nodes is drained into axillary lymph nodes next 20% of lymph is drained into internal mammary lymph nodes internal mammary lymph nodes just 5% of that 5% of the lymph will drain into your subperitoneal lymph plexus subperitoneal lymph plexus now have you understood these three statements to teach you that these three statements to teach you these three statements i have explained all these things so this is very 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 important statement very 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 important okay very 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 important Yes, Shantono, you can uh, happily start with these lectures. Okay, no need to worry. Hi, Matt Booster. So, all of you understood, guys. All of you have understood whatever I've taught now. Yeah. Fine. Next important thing. Next important thing is that let me take up this box all the way down. Yes, look here now. Right. So, as I told you, 75% of your lymph is drained into axillary lymph nodes. Right. And this 75% of the lymph is coming from which part? It is coming from this part over here. Right. It is coming from this yellow color part, whatever I am writing. And mostly which part here? Mostly the upper lateral quadrant. So can I tell upper lateral quadrant as it is draining lot and lot of lymph. So can I tell that cancer cells from the upper lateral quadrant can very easily enter into the axillary lymph nodes. Right. And most commonly the breast cancers also develop in the upper lateral quadrant. You know cancers travel through lymph. Cancers also travel through your blood hematogenous pathway and lymphatogenous pathway. So, most lymph is there. So, obviously, cancers will develop in the upper lateral quadrant. Right? 60% of the cancers develop in your upper lateral quadrant. Keep this thing in mind. Okay? Right. Next important thing is that, next important thing is that, whenever, whenever a patient has got a breast cancer, the first important point to remember is that, the patient will complain, Doctor, I am feeling some kind of hard lump which is in my breast. The patient feels a hard lump like thing in the breast and you have to ask whether it is painful the patient will tell no it is painless no pain and when you examine when you examine the breast look at the breast guys look at the nipple 
in these patients what will happen is that the lip, the nipple is pulled back right the nipple is pulled inside it is retracted backwards as you can see the nipple this kind of nipple is called as inverted nipple normally nipple is like this now it is inverted inside right so this kind of nipple is called as inverted nipple sir regarding the breast cancer what kind of questions they can ask one question they can ask you for sure is that yesterday class i have told you that you have got a lobule like this right this lobule will drain into something called as sinus this is called as lactiferous sinus and lactiferous sinus will in turn drain into this duct called as lactiferous duct isn't it obviously guys within lactiferous sinus or lactiferous duct you will have epithelial cells so let us say within this lactiferous duct you have right guys i'm sorry so, so there my there was a little delay so all of you can look at the screen right now yeah now visible right yeah so so remember this one statement guys remember this one statement that how does i mean from where does this breast cancer arise basically so at this picture itself i'm writing it Green boy. Breast cancer arises from the epithelial cells of this lactiferous duct. Epithelial cells of lactiferous duct. Okay. Now, next important thing I want to tell you about the breast, and we shall close this discussion, guys. Let us say that this is the breast, this is the nipple, right? Now, all of you know that within the mammary gland, within the breast, you have got a lot of veins. Let us say there are lots of veins like this, right? So, there are lots of veins. There is a very intense venous network like this, okay? Now, what I am trying to tell you is that, for example, for example, all of you concentrate now. For example, if there is a cancer that is on one end of the vessel as well as on the other end of the vessel, there is a cancer on one end as well as the other end of the vessel. Then what will happen? What will happen is that whatever fluid which is present within the veins, right? So will this fluid move forward or backward? It cannot move anywhere. So it will struck there, right? It will be there itself. And what will happen? What will happen is that look here, the, the, the quantity of the fluid increases. As the quantity of the fluid increases within the vein, the vein also will swell up. When the vein will swell up, what will happen? Look here. When the vein is swelling up, there are gaps in between the veins. So, when there are gaps, what is going to happen is that all the fluid is going to leak out. All the fluid is going to leak out. So, there will be a lot of fluid that will be deposited within your mammary gland. So, when there is a lot of fluid that will be deposited within the mammary gland, the mammary gland will swell. Right? Now, when the mammary gland will swell, this is how the mammary gland looks. Look at the mammary gland here. I mean, this is an orange, obviously. This is an orange. This is the nipple. And look at this mammary gland here. So, I am showing you the real picture. This is a picture of an orange. But look at the real picture. The real picture also looks like an orange. Right? Now, what is this condition called as, guys? This condition where the entire breast, because of excess amount of fluid, when it turns to orange, right? Orange like appearance, this is called as. PUD orange syndrome. PUD orange syndrome. Very good. Shreya. Shreya Jajaria. Excellent. This is called as PUD orange syndrome. And yesterday I have explained to you regarding the nipple. Nipple is in which intercostal space, guys? Can anyone tell? Which intercostal space is the nipple? Very good. 
nipple is in the fourth intercostal space excellent very good now we are done discussing the breast now let us discuss the axilla guys okay now all of you are ready yeah have you understood the breast topic guys completely very good shubham very good adil medico explorer very good right fine so let us start now when it comes to axilla after the axilla i will be starting and discussing the muscles of your upper limb okay now when it comes to the axilla first of all axilla is a pyramidal shape axilla is actually like this look here now all of you axilla is somewhat like this okay so this is the shape of axilla basically axilla is a pyramidal shape okay axilla is a pyramidal shape structure axilla is a pyramidal shape structure and where is this axilla located this axilla is located in between the upper arm as well as the chest all of you look here this is the chest this is the chest and this is the upper arm between the chest as well as the upper arm whatever area you can see here right so this is called as your axilla okay now in this axilla look here this this region is called as the apex of the axilla as i'm going down the boundaries are getting broader and broader and broader so this will be the base this will be the apex this will be the base of the axilla okay this is the only thing you need to remember for now now when i'm talking about the apex of the axilla how can i know the borders of axilla i will only know the borders of axilla when i put a camera on the top when i put a camera on the top like this only then i will know the borders of axilla so when i am putting a camera on the top how does the axilla look all of you all of you look here pay attention this is my clavicle all of you pay attention guys because this borders are really difficult right so stop commenting look at this this is my clavicle exactly back of my clavicle what do i have scapula and what is here exactly what is here here is the first rib this is my clavicle back i have scapula this is my first rib the same things i'm drawing it right now look here this is the clavicle back i have what scapula look here this is the scapula on the back and we have got the first rib like this okay so this will be your scapula this is your clavicle and this is the first rib so this is the picture which i am looking from the top right so clavicle is anterior so obviously this is the anterior side where is scapula posterior so obviously this is this will be the posterior side and where is my first rib medially right so this will be the medial side so this is the question which was asked in 2016 fmg guys 2016 fmg they asked what forms the borders of the apex of the axilla the apex of the axilla are formed by anteriorly clavicle medially the first rib posteriorly scapula did you understood right have you understood guys yes revendra is telling it is called as cervico axillary canal very good revan it is also called as cervico axillary canal it is called as cervico axillary canal very good very good now what i am doing is that i am going little bit below now okay we have done discussing the upper part now i am going to the lower part now in the lower part also yeah by the way i have got this picture as well look here guys this is my sternum okay anteriorly i have got what clavicle posteriorly i have got what scapula and medially i have got what first rib so this cavity or the canal which i can see here this is called a cervico axillary canal or the apex of the apex of the this thing the axilla okay now look here another important thing another important thing is that i am going little bit below now now this is very important and i'm telling you if they will ask you a question on the upper limb there will definitely be a question from axilla as well okay so now we shall be discussing the axilla and its contents axilla and its contents as well as the boundaries also 
okay now i to avoid confusion just concentrate on me look here what are the walls of axilla now i am putting my hand like this now when i am putting my hand like this first thing i have humerus where is humerus laterally located medially what do i have laterally humerus i have then medially what do i have medially i have got my ribs laterally i have humerus medially i have got my ribs posteriorly what do i have scapula humerus ribs scapula clear now look here what did i tell you laterally what do i have laterally i have humerus this is the humerus okay this is the humerus that is located laterally like this medially what do i have ribs i have got my rib like this medially posteriorly what do i have got i have got scapula let us say posteriorly i have got my scapula like this clear so now very important thing after writing the boundaries the second important thing i am doing is that anteriorly what do i have what is this muscle anteriorly anyone be fast guys anteriorly i have got my come on very good pectoralis major anteriorly very good dirappa revan reddy excellent anteriorly i have got pectoralis major so look here anteriorly i am drawing pectoralis major if i remove pectoralis major inside what will be there pectoralis minor so i am drawing pectoralis minor also okay next coming to the humerus coming to the humerus within this humerus we can see three things what are these three things this is called as bicipital groove okay next we have got the lateral lip here we have got the medial lip here now you tell me from the bicipital groove i am drawing a muscle all the way like this what can be this muscle guys from the bicipital groove yes what is this muscle which i am drawing from the bicipital groove not biceps Pro very good latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi is the muscle which is arising from the bicipital groove right now from the lateral lip what is the muscle that is emerging from the lateral lip guys yes what is this muscle that is coming out of the lateral lip like this very good this is teres major muscle right this is actually the medial lip okay this is actually the medial lip so this will be your lateral lip right this will be your medial lip medial lip so from the medial lip you have got this muscle a and this muscle b a is called as teres major whereas b is called as latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi clear now let us look one more important thing one last important thing guys that attached to my ribs attached to my ribs what is the muscle do i have attached to my ribs i told you yesterday that muscle is called as a powerful protractor muscle you remember that attached to my ribs here what is that muscle excellent excellent that is called as your serratus muscle this muscle is called as your serratus anterior muscle okay and next important thing the last important thing is that this is my scapula if i'm turning it this is called as a subscapular region subscapular region has also got a muscle like this what is this called as subscapularis the name of the muscle is subscapularis so let us name all of them guys let us name all of them this is your serratus anterior okay this is your pectoralis major okay this is your pectoralis minor okay and this is called as subscapularis and remember one thing there was a question long 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 ago that subscapularis is also called as what subscapularis is also called as a forgotten muscle forgotten muscle okay subscapularis but i don't want you to forget this muscle okay subscapularis is called as a forgotten muscle so did you understand the borders guys have you understood these borders very very simple because why i'm stressing on this a lot because many questions are repeated from this guys you will get to know how the questions are repeated okay laterally humerus medially ribs posteriorly scapula okay 
anteriorly pectoralis major and minor this is the thing i want you to remember so if you want to understand this clearly remember like this that this is the lateral opposite will be medial where is pectoralis anterior and this is posterior clear the same thing the same thing i'm i have put it down i have put it down the same thing now let us write let us write all the walls here now tell me anterior wall of axilla anterior wall of axilla is formed by what all structures only two things as of i know what are these two things this is called as pectoralis major this is called as pectoralis minor okay so pectoralis major pectoralis minor these two form the anterior surface of your axilla clear anterior surface of your axilla next important thing let us go on to the posterior wall now posterior wall of the axilla now you will tell me posterior wall is formed by anyone very good haida very good birappa excellent aisha very good posterior wall is formed by yeah obviously why not scapula scapula subscapularis subscapularis guys if you look very carefully here i want you to concentrate here when i'm dividing this like this this is my anterior this is my posterior so posteriorly what are things are there guys even there is latissimus dorsi here even there is teres major muscle isn't it so can i also write latissimus dorsi as well as teres major even they also form the posterior wall then now you tell me what forms the medial wall and what forms the lateral wall yeah medial wall is formed by what is this medial wall is formed by very good rizan riza islam very good it is formed by serratus anterior muscle now coming to the lateral wall lateral wall it is little bit difficult guys i just want you to remember one thing the lateral wall this is the medial and this is the lateral wall first thing i'm writing is humerus because all of you know that is humerus is forming the lateral wall right along with the humerus remember just two things just two things coracobrachialis biceps brachii okay i cannot show it to you here coraco brachialis and short head of biceps that's it if you remember this then all your questions if you remember this then all your questions on your axilla will be covered okay now we shall be discussing the contents anyways we shall discuss the contents anyways and where there is a very beautiful mnemonic to remember that so have you understood the borders guys all of you any doubts be fast have you understood the borders the boundaries if i directly put this picture in front of you it would be difficult for you to understand so that is the reason why i have drawn this picture and then i have kept the uh, real picture over there so you understood right okay guys now first point let us discuss about the contents let us discuss about the contents after after looking at this lecture on axilla guys if you want you can solve any mcq on axilla all of them will be covered okay you need not to worry okay i have covered all of them okay don't panic and don't worry l i a r right so there are four contents guys what are these four contents okay now you tell me within this within this we have got something interesting things what are these interesting things can you look here on the serratus anterior muscle there is a nerve like this there is a nerve on the serratus anterior what nerve can it be guys on the serratus anterior yesterday we have discussed very much detailed about that yeah Adia, yes, I will discuss it. Okay, if time passes, I will discuss it, or it, or else in the next class I shall do it. Very good, all of you. Excellent. So the first important thing is the long thoracic nerve. Very good, Adia. Very good, Eric. Eric, excellent. Lipum, excellent. Lipun. 
लॉन्ग थोरैसिक नर्व ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट नर्व हियर इज इंटर कोस्टल ब्रेकियल नर्व इंटर कोस्टल ब्रेकियल नर्व थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट इंफ्रा क्लैविकुलर इंफ्रा क्लैविकुलर पार्ट ऑफ ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सेस आई विल टीच यू ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सेस एंड आई विल टेल यू इट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट्स अबाउट द क्लैविकल हाफ ऑफ द ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सेस इज देयर बिलो द क्लैविकल अनदर हाफ इज देयर ओके फोर्थ इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एक्सिला सो ऑब्वियसली एक्सिलरी obviously axillary artery will be there axillary vein will be there axillary lymph nodes also will be there isn't it that it is very difficult for us to remember now how do you remember how do you remember is that remember by mnemonic l i a r juta right layer l stands for long thoracic nerve i stands for intercostal brachial nerve right and where is a here there is no a But just think that there is this is A, okay? And R stands for R stands for axillary vein, axillary artery, as well as axillary nerve, okay? Right. So have we all understood this? We are done with the axilla. Have you all understood this? Simple things, guys. We have just talked three important MCQs. One is about cervical axillary canal borders. Second thing is that we have talked about the borders of axilla, very easy, and we have talked all the contents. Okay, it is simple. You understood it, right? Right. Now, yesterday, yesterday I have made a chart. If you remember it, yesterday I have made this chart, isn't it? So I have made this chart. Yes. Yesterday I made a chart that we have to discuss about pectoral region and we are done with the pectoral region. Today we shall discuss about back, scapular, arm, forearm as well as hand. We shall very fastly finish it this up, okay? And from back muscles till the hand muscles, these are very important, very difficult, and very very high yield guys. Very important, very difficult, and very high yield. So I want your hundred percent attention here because it is a little bit tricky to understand. so i want your 100% attention so are you all ready guys are you all ready with this okay fine let's start now now coming to the muscles of the back region coming to the muscles of the back region what are the names of the muscles i'll tell you later on okay but let us discuss one by one muscle the first important thing as you can look at this picture very clearly here now what is this picture this this part over here is called as external occipital protuberance external occipital protuberance okay external occipital protuberance so from c1 all the way okay from c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and all the way till t12 i have drawn a red line there now this muscle which i'm drawing right now is your trapezius muscle right yes saisha this will be recorded right i don't want you to make any notes right now just listen to what i'm telling because it's very difficult here all the way from external occipital protuberance down till t12 right we have got a muscle which is originating this is called as trapezius muscle and where is this trapezius muscle inserting look here very carefully the trapezius muscle all the way comes and inserts to the scapula like this it all the way comes and inserts to the scapula from lower part also from the upper part and the from the lower part now this trapezius muscle is divided into three parts what are these three parts see this is one part this is second part and this is the third part now look here very very carefully guys the muscles here are projected in this way the muscles here are projected in this way the fibers here are projected in this way and the name of this muscle is trapezius so now you understood the origin and insertion from external occipital protuberance till t12 and again i'm telling 
again i'm telling for mbbs students you have to know it uh, students who are preparing for any other exams you need not to know it because they're not going to ask you origins and okay for next exam definitely they will not ask you so finally they are inserting to the scapula now look here very carefully there are some fibers attached here let us say part 1 part 2 part 3 now part 1 fibers when i'm pulling them scapula is moving in this direction when i'm pulling them my scapula is moving in this direction it means can i tell my scapula is elevating right so can i also call it as can i also call like this that superior fibers superior fibers cause elevation of scapula elevation of scapula clear next there are part number 2 there are some fibers attached directly here right onto the medial border so when i am pulling these fibers my scapula is moving like this it is not moving up it is moving in this direction horizontally can i call this as retraction of scapula when you are stretching your back like this this is what your scapula is doing retraction okay so fibers number 2 called as middle fibers middle fibers they cause retraction of your scapula retraction of your scapula third important thing the fibers part number three they are attached down here when i'm pulling them the scapula is moving downward like this so can i tell my scapula is getting depressed right this is called depression of scapula right can inferior fibers inferior fibers are causing depression of scapula so overall guys overall there are three functions what are those three functions elevation retraction as well as depression claro is everyone clear is everyone clear before i go to the next muscle so origin insertion is finished and the function is also finished right next muscle i'm drawing it with the violet color guys next muscle i'm drawing it with the violet color look here this muscle originates from t6 t6 all the way it comes down it even covers your iliac uh, let us say sacrum bone it even covers your iliac crest okay and all the way all the way this muscle goes like this look here again this muscle goes all the way and inserts to your bicipital groove what is the muscle that is inserting to your bicipital groove i have already talked about it yes now it is your time to answer guys very good piyush excellent the muscle that is called as latissimus dorsi perfect latissimus dorsi very good latissimus dorsi okay this is latissimus dorsi origin t6 till l5 again half of the sacrum then sacral crest i mean iliac crest then it is going and inserting to your bicipital groove bicipital groove bicipital groove okay so one very important thing guys what question they can ask you from this definite question write it down guys i'm telling you write it down definite question you can see you can see an empty gap here can you see an empty gap which i'm shading here right now can anyone tell me the borders of this gap i'm just putting down the arrows you will tell me the borders see there is one muzzle down medially we have got one muzzle laterally we have got one muzzle okay inferiorly we have got a muzzle inferiorly we have got a muzzle called as latissimus dorsi medially we have got a muzzle that is called as a trapezius laterally we have got laterally we have got scapula laterally we have got scapula so all these three borders very good gopi raja Go gopi raja bruce wayne perfect all these three together form a triangle called as triangle of auscultation even i don't think that uh, your faculty would have taught you this important thing because this is not present in the old literature right which are following so this is triangle of auscultation triangle of auscultation okay triangle of auscultation now why it is called as triangle of auscultation because you put a stethoscope over here 
you can very clearly listen to the lung sounds so the lung is basically over here the lower lobes of the lung are here you can very clearly listen to all the different sounds of the lung in the lower lobes this is called triangle of auscultation first mcq very very important mcq triangle of auscultation and there were also questions repeated on this guys i'll show it to you right now so you understood it second important thing second important thing is that let me move this part and there is no gap over here okay i'm putting it here okay next important part is that from the front side if you see from the front side if you see you can find a muzzle over here this muzzle is called as external oblique okay from the back also you will see a little part of this muzzle okay now concentrate here this is the muzzle this is the muzzle which you can see here okay this is the muzzle which you can see here now this muzzle is called as external oblique muzzle external oblique muzzle when i discuss about abdomen i will teach you okay external oblique muzzle clear external oblique muzzle now look here here can you find can you find another triangle here can you see another triangle over here the green color one right now what are the borders of this triangle one side i have got external oblique on the other side i have got i mean lower side i have got iliac crest right iliac crest in the sense the ala of the iliac bone are called as iliac crest and third thing medially i have got latissimus dorsi so these three things also together form a triangle very good bruce wayne perfect are you all first year students who are answering me let me know very good sanjay pande sanjay pande is telling that this is called as petit's triangle this is called as petit's triangle not only petit's triangle it is also called as lumbar triangle lumbar triangle why because all of you might have heard of a term called as hernia there is some hernia called as lumbar hernia lumbar hernia will happen at this triangle that is why it is called as lumbar triangle are you all clear guys right now this was a question that was asked these two were the questions that were asked one in june attempt fmge either i think it is in 2015 i think and another one is 2017 recently they have asked in december attempt okay so these are the two questions what are these two questions triangle of auscultation is associated with all of the following except you will tell me the answer now what is the answer guys yes tell me very good very good triangle of auscultation is associated with both of them b and c i have added one more option b and c clear question number 2 which among the following is not a border of triangle of auscultation which is not a border question number 2 very good preetangel very good harish reddy perfect sanjay pande excellent sweety sri siddhan sharma perfect serratus anterior is not a border of triangle of auscultation clear all of you let us enter into the next muscle so far we have discussed two muscles muscle number 1 which we discussed was trapezius muscle number 2 which we discussed was latissimus dorsi let us look on to the third muscle so this muscle over here is your trapezius trapezius okay let us look on to the next muscle now look here all of you pay attention there are three muscles here what are these three muscles are first muscle arises all the way from c1 till c4 okay from c1 to c4 it arises and look here it attaches onto the top of it attaches onto the top of the scapula second muzzle from c7 to t1 right and this muzzle attaches exactly opposite to the medial border 
नेक्स्ट मजल अराइजेस फ्रॉम टी टू टिल टी फाइव एंड दिस मजल अटैचेस टू द लोअर एंगल ऑफ द स्केपला द मजल विच इज ऑन द टॉप दिस इज कॉल्ड एज लेवेटर स्केपले लेवेटर स्केपले सर वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज लेवेटर स्केपले because when i'm pulling this fiber the scapula is elevated so i call it as levator scapula and next important thing is that i have got two important muscles here this is called as rhomboid muscle this is also called as rhomboid muscle but one is called as rhomboid minor another one is called as rhomboid major aisa kaise why because rhomboid minor is only from c71 Major is from T two, T three, T four, and T five, right? So that is why it is major. We are done with all the muscles of the back. Have you understood? If you have understood, then I'll go for the nerve supply. Yes. very good very good so 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 movement siddharth i have already explained the movements they are all associated with the movements of scapula okay so look here we so far discussed about trapezius we discuss about uh, uh siddharth is asking about rhomboid movements look here siddharth rhomboid minor is exactly attached to this part of the scapula right so when i'm pulling it there will be retraction there will be retraction of scapula in the same way rhomboid major is attached to the inferior angle of scapula right so when i'm pulling it there will be depression of scapula you're clear siddhan latissimus dorsi rhomboid major rhomboid minor as well as levator scapulae so these are the muscles Okay, you are clear, Siddhar. Siddhar, you are clear with this. With the doubt which you had, right? What are the muscles? Simply remember as tan. What is tan? T stands for trapezius. What is A and N stand for? A stands for accessory. N stands for nerve. Accessory nerve. Accessory nerve. What accessory? Spinal accessory nerve. if there is a problem with spinal accessory nerve what will be the defect i have explained this in the yesterday's class what will be the defect if there is a problem with the spinal accessory nerve yeah if you have watched my lecture yesterday again and again for revision you might have answered it sanjay pande not winging of scapula it is partial winging ravi chauhan excellent it is partial winging of scapula okay partial winging of scapula sir how to remember latissimus dorsi rhomboid major minor and levator scapula very 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 easy just follow what i am teaching you okay look here how do you remember latissimus dorsi where is this latissimus dorsi located in the thoracic region on the back in the thoracic region so the nerve is thoraco and where is it on the ventral side or on the dorsal side it is on the dorsal side on the back thoraco dorsal nerve thoraco dorsal nerve next important thing rhomboid major rhomboid minor look at these muscles where are they attaching are they attaching to the ventral side or are they attaching onto the dorsal side they are attaching onto the dorsal side so the nerve is dorsal scapular nerve sir if it is dorsal scapular nerve because they are attaching onto the dorsal side then levator scapula is also attaching to the dorsal side then uh, what is the nerve supply it is also dorsal scapular nerve it is also dorsal scapular nerve we are done discussing the muscles of the back right we shall go on to the muscles of the scapular region right we are done with the discussion of this right so we are discussing right now the muscles of the scapular region. so you understood the muscles of the back now let us enter into the muscles of scapula region so how to remember the muscles of scapula region very easy thing remember it as d sits 
D sits. What does D stand for? D stands for deltoid. D stands for deltoid. And what does S stand for? Look here. Simple thing. This is scapula, right? This is scapula. And what is this humerus? Humerus is attached to the scapula here. Humerus is attached to the scapula. Now, there is a muscle here. This muscle is called as deltoid. Done. Second one. Look at the scapula here. Above the spine, this region is called supraspinatus. Below the spine, this region is called infraspinatus. If there is a muscle attached above the spine, I call it as supraspinatus muscle. If there is a muscle attached below the spine, I call it as infraspinatus muscle. So, two muscles are also done. One is called supraspinatus. Another one is called as infra spinatus. Okay. And what does T stands for? T stands for teres major as well as teres minor. And finally, what does S stand for? You told me there is some forgotten muscle here. What is that? Subscapularis. Subscapularis. So, very easy to remember. Just five muscles. Deltoid, above the spine, below the spine. Subscapularis. Teres major minor. Okay? Teres major and minor. Now, this question has been repeatedly asked, repeatedly, repeatedly and repeatedly asked. How they asked is that they have given you the image and they asked where is it inserting. This is the question that is repeatedly asked. What is this question? First of all, this is your clavicle. Okay. From where does, what is the origin of deltoid muscle? Look here. Origin of deltoid muscle is from lateral one third of clavicle. Uh, Shashi Bhushan, muscles of rotator cuff, I will explain now. Okay, in a minute I will explain. Lateral one third of clavicle, acromion process, acromion process, and also spine of the scapula. Spine of the scapula, acromion process, and lateral one third of the clavicle. From here, the deltoid muscle will originate, and this deltoid muscle inserts onto the deltoid tuberosity like this. It inserts exactly here onto the deltoid tuberosity. So, this was a question that was asked. It is inserting to deltoid tuberosity. And all of you should also remember this is from lateral one third of clavicle. Lateral one third of clavicle. Okay. Lateral one third of clavicle as well as from the spine of the scapula. Right. We are done discussing the deltoid. Second important thing, what did I tell you? I told you that uh, above the spine, this muscle is called as supraspinatus. Below the spine, this muscle is called as infraspinatus. And after that, I told you we have got two more muscles, teres minor, teres major. Teres major, I will not tell you because you already know, teres major attaches to which lip? Medial lip or lateral lip? Is the image blur? Is the image blur guys? Okay, fine. So, medial lip or lateral lip? Obviously, it is attached to the medial lip. Very good, Siddharth. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Look here now. So, we have got a muscle that is attached like this. This is called as teres minor. We, we, we even have Yeah, we even have a muscle that is attached onto the lateral lip, sorry, medial lip. This is called as teres major. So, this muscle is called as teres major. I am going to tell you one very difficult thing right now. All of you concentrate. Now, this muscle is called as teres minor muscle. This, what is this muscle? Teres minor muscle. Teres minor muscle. Okay. Now, this question has been two questions from the scapular region are repeatedly asked. What are these two questions are? First question is that, where are these muscles originating? They don't ask you because you know very well. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscap, you know it. 
they are going to ask you where are these muscles inserting i am telling you guys listen to this part very carefully it is very important where are these muscles inserting are point number 1 point number 1 is that supraspinatus attaches to the greater or greater tubercle i told you yesterday that this is the humerus it has got a greater tubercle it has even got a lesser tubercle so supraspinatus attaches to the greater tubercle then where does infraspinatus attach infraspinatus also attaches to the greater tubercle then where does teres minor attach teres minor is also attaching to the greater tubercle then where does teres major attach it attaches to the medial leg so you are telling me that you are telling me that supra supraspinatus infra spinatus and teres minor you are telling me these three are attached to greater tubercle yes these three are attached to greater tubercle and where is teres minor is attached to the medial leg very 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 important guys very 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 important any exam you go any viva exam also you go right definitely they will ask you this question definitely and definitely they going to ask you this question keep this thing in mind please okay keep this thing in mind now what are rotator cuff muscles all of you might have known that this is a famous question right need not to tell because you know this what are the rotator cuff muscles so we have got supraspinatus we have got infraspinatus okay we have got teres minor we have got subscapularis sir you forgot to mention one muscle yes that muscle is teres major muscle teres major is not included under rotator cuff only teres minor is included under rotator cuff so what are the four rotator cuff muscles supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis are the rotator cuff muscles okay rotator cuff muscles you, you know i know all of you that you have a mnemonic sits right but the examiner also know that mnemonic so he will confuse you here instead of teres minor he will give you teres major are you sure yes because previously there was a questions once asked look here what was this question which of the following muscles does not form part of rotator cuff this was a question supraspinatus is there infraspinatus is there sorry supraspinatus uh, infraspinatus teres major teres minor what will be the answer very good b teres major is not a part teres minor is is a part of that okay so 1 2 3 sorry yes 1 2 3 and 4 okay clear everyone now first question first question is what are the rotator cuff muscles okay second important question is that the the first three where do they sit on they sit on greater tubercle they sit on greater tubercle and where the subscapularis will sit it sits on the lesser tubercle not trochanter it is tubercle greater tubercle and lesser tubercle okay next important thing guys they have also asked you one very important thing out of all these rotator cuff muscles which is the muscle that is most commonly injured most commonly injured which is the muscle that is most commonly injured very good sweety very good life cycle no life cycle i haven't answered the most commonly injured muscle is supraspinatus why supraspinatus you know look here now very carefully this is how right this is how it is attached like this this is how your humerus is attached now where is supraspinatus look here very carefully this is supraspinatus okay supraspinatus is like this wherever my index finger is there this is the place of supraspinatus okay this is a place of supraspinatus it means can i tell like this yes this is my supraspinatus 
so mostly commonly it is injured because it is more superficially located so mostly injuries will happen to supraspinatus muscle okay mostly injuries will happen to supraspinatus muscle and second important thing when i'm pulling my supraspinatus look here when i'm pulling my supraspinatus what is happening to my arm my arm is abducting or adducting it is moving laterally laterally is called abduction when i'm pulling my supraspinatus it is causing abduction keep this thing in mind okay so supraspinatus is the most common injured muscle injured muscle and supraspinatus function is initial abduction initial abduction initial abduction initial abduction means yahan tak abduct kar diya aur chhod diya it is not like this okay it is only initial abduction theek hai 0 to 15 degrees only from 15 degrees to 90 degrees dusra muscle hai wo main baad mein bataunga but now 0 to 15 degrees supraspinatus very very good guys very good bruce excellent bruce clear so this is all you need to know and one last important point regarding the nerve supply of uh, this is that it is very easy to remember the nerve supply remember it as salu you know s g s a l u in hindi salu is different in telugu salu is different okay so what is salu supraspinatus is supplied by suprascapular nerve suprascapular nerve infraspinatus is also supplied by suprascapular nerve teres minor is supplied by a a stands for axillary nerve axillary nerve and teres major is supplied by l l stands for lower subscapular nerve lower subscapular nerve then what is u if there is lower there will be upper so upper subscapular nerve easy peasy right understood yes shashi is telling uh, uh, axillary also supplies deltoid yes shashi it is right i will tell you later on those things okay naresh is telling that 15 to 90 degrees is deltoid very good naresh it is right 15 to 90 degrees is deltoid okay when i'll be discussing specifically about deltoid later on i'll tell you but that is not that important for you to remember okay so whatever i'm teaching you that would be enough for you so have you all understood guys now i'm going on to the clinical part so in 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 uh, rotator cuff muscles we are about to finish this session don't worry in rotator cuff muscles what are the things we have discussed muscles ka naam name of the muscles done first thing second thing humne ye bola ki deltoid jaake deltoid tuberosity ko insert hoga second thing khatam third thing supra infra minor jaake greater tubercle ko insert karega aur teres major jaake medial lip ko insert karega khatam next most common injury is supraspinatus finished initial abduction supraspinatus finished coming to the nerve supply salu clear everyone yes abiram bruce wayne naresh shashi all of you are clear adil very good now let us enter into the most important and clinical part most important and clinical part all of you all of you put your pens down just look at what i am writing this is called as coracoid process this is called as coracoid process this is called as acromion process acromion process okay between the coracoid process between the acromion process i have got a ligament here this is called as coraco acromial ligament this is called as coraco acromial ligament theek hai why are you telling this because we are discussing uh, we are discussing these uh, rotator cuff why are you telling this the reason is that they have asked a question coraco acromial arch is formed by so you got an arch like this this arch is formed by three things coracoid process coraco acromial ligament and acromion process clear mcq another one also finished next important thing 
ये कौन सा मजिल है कैन एनी वन टेल वॉट इज दिस मजिल हियर वेरी गुड रेवंत रेड्डी इट इज डेल्टॉयड मजिल डेल्टॉयड मजिल और एक चीज मैंने पहले भी बोला था स्टार्टिंग ऑल्स आई टोल्ड यू देर इज अजिल दैट इज रनिंग डाउन लाइक दिस रनिंग डाउन वॉट इज दैट मजिल दिस इज यूअर सुप्रा स्पाइनेटस मजिल सुप्रा स्पाइनेटस मजिल ओके गुड इवनिंग मोहम्मद राजेक गुड इवनिंग दिस इज सुप्रा स्पाइनेटस मजिल okay look at the supraspinatus very clearly because later on i am going to show you one very important thing aur ek cheez deltoid or acromion process ke niche you can see a brinjal colored bursa can you see this so some scientists tell that this is located beneath the acromion process so they started telling sub acromial bursa and some scientists started telling no no it is located below deltoid so they started telling sub deltoid valsa dono bhi sahi hai why are you teaching this because because if there is an inflammation if you are over using your shoulder cricket cricket khelte time bowling karte time pe agar zyada use kiya zyada strain kiya shoulder ko then what will happen is that this bursa will be inflamed this bursa will be inflamed so inflammation of this bursa is called as सब एक्रोमियल बर्साइटिस वॉट इज दट कॉल्ड सब एक्रोमियल बर्साइटिस क्लियर सब एक्रोमियल बर्साइटिस ओके नाउ वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग लुक हियर फॉर सम पेशेंट वॉट विल हैपन इज दैट ये सुपरा स्पाइनेटस मजिल गाइज आर यू फाइन विथ माई हिंदी कैन यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंड Yeah, I can. So in this supraspinatus muscle, what will happen is that sometimes, okay, not all the times. Sometimes, okay, I'll speak in English only. Sometimes, what will happen is that. Look here very carefully. Sometimes, what will happen is that there will be some calcium deposition going on. There will be some little bit of calcium. that will be deposited on the supraspinatus tendon you see there is a calcium deposition on this so when calcium gets deposited the muscle will become stiff so when the muscle will become stiff the patient can't even abduct his arm there will not be initial abduction of the arm this is called as calcified supraspinatus tendinitis okay so calcium deposition within the supraspinatus muscle is called as calcified supraspinatus tendinitis calcified supraspinatus tendinitis so patient will have very severe pain here this is also called as painful arc syndrome what is this it is also called as painful arc syndrome painful arc syndrome okay are you all clear because why am i stressing on this point is that uh, recently guys they have given one mri scan not in anatomy okay in radiology in radiology fmg they have given an mri scan and they have asked what is this condition obviously radiology in the sense it is equivalent to anatomy everything will be clinical orientation so look here now look here first thing is that you have to identify a muscle this is an mri scan now in this look here this thing which you can see here let me use another see this muscle which you can see here what is this muscle guys anyone uh mohammad razik ek ghante pehle se main class le raha hu but don't worry ye video yahan pe hi rahega theek hai very good this is called deltoid muscle next important i am rubbing the deltoid now i am rubbing the deltoid look here see guys very clearly i am drawing here there is another muscle that is going like this can you see here i am rubbing it look here very carefully what is this muscle very good very good supraspinatus supraspinatus right 
compare the same MRI. This is a normal MRI. Normal MRI. Compare the same MRI onto the opposite side. Exactly in that region, you can see this white color deposition. This is called calcified supraspinatus tendinitis. Calcium deposition. As it is exam me, yehi question aaya tha. As it is, this question only was asked in the exam. Are you clear now? Very good, very good. Are you clear guys? Very good. Clear? We are even done with the muscles of the back and muscles of the scapular region. Now, now, yeah, you have got some questions over here. You know, when this question was asked, this question, after this session, we shall have a session on thorax, I mean, in the subsequent sessions, Aska. This question was asked in August exam, where the first time clinical pattern was set up. That time this question was asked. Look here. A 58 year old man presents uh, to the clinic with a 6 month history of shoulder pain. Che mahine se shoulder pain. Over the weekend, he strained his shoulder. He strained his shoulder. Mene kya bola tha pehle? Overuse of shoulder. Overuse of shoulder should not be done. Uh, on exam, he complains pain palpation just below the acromion. You uh, suspect he has a torn supraspinatus. If correct, which of these functions will be affected? Tell me. Which of the function will be affected? Very, very good. Very, very good. It is initiation of abduction. Initiation of abduction. Clear? Initiation of abduction. Very good, guys. Perfect. And this one, you know, infraspinatus is inserted too, obviously. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor is inserted too. Very good, very good. Greater tuberosity, greater tuberosity, right? Greater tuberosity, greater tubercle. Okay, very good, guys. Very good. And yeah, tell me this one. A 32 year old male was brought to the emergency department after being injured in a mob violence. Uh, the patient had a penetrating injury in the right shoulder region by a sharp glass piece. On examination, there was drooping of right shoulder. Associated with partial winging of scapula. Partial winging of scapula. Very, very good. Spinal accessory nerve. All these questions were previously asked. And I am really happy that you guys are answering this. Very, very good guys. Very good. Right, so let us fast up the, let us fast it up. Now we shall be discussing the muscles of the arm. Very, very easy guys. Nothing to remember. Look here. Muscles of the arm. Whenever I am telling you muscles of the arm, remember one very important thing. Okay. What is that important thing is that, this is my anatomical position. For all the first years and third years I am telling. This is my anatomical position. Now whatever you can see, this is called as the flexor region. So all these muscles here are called as flexors. All these muscles are flexors and when I turn back, whatever muscles you can see on my back, these are called as extensors, okay, flexor. What do I mean by flexor? Flexor means when I am flexing it, the angle is decreasing. This is called flexion. When I am extending it, the angle is increasing. This is called extension, okay. These are flexors, these are extensors, that's it. So, from now onwards, whenever I pick up one muscle from the flexor region, and ask you what is the name of, what is the function of this muscle, you should tell it as flexion. Okay. Now, arm has got two compartments, anterior compartment, posterior compartment. Anterior compartment is also called as flexors and posterior compartment is also called as extensors. Okay. Now, how do you remember anterior compartment? Remember it as BBC. What is BBC? B stands for BBC. Okay. B stands for biceps brachii. Another B stands for brachioradialis. Another C stands for coracobrachialis. 
sorry, this is not brachioradialis, it is brachialis. Okay. I'm sorry. So biceps brachii, brachialis, and coracobrachialis. Now, when it comes to extensors, we have got what? Triceps brachii. Triceps brachii. Triceps brachii. Okay. Now, when I discuss about biceps brachii, within the biceps brachii, there are two important heads. One is called as one is called as the small head small head another one is called as the large head okay or you can call it a short head and long head okay short head of biceps brachii long head of biceps brachii in the same way triceps is also having three heads what are that we have got long head we have got lateral head we have got medial head we have got medial head here we have got medial head now one very important thing you have to remember is that what is the muscle that is supplying your entire anterior compartment? The entire anterior compartment is supplied by a nerve called as musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve. The entire posterior compartment is supplied by a nerve called as radial nerve. Radial nerve. Okay. But in some individuals, some individuals what will happen is that this brachialis is supplied by two nerves. What are those two nerves? It is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve. Also, it is supplied by radial nerve. That is the reason why brachialis is called as a hybrid muscle. This muscles ko tum hybrid muscles bologe? Those muscles which are having dual nerve innervation. Right? In some individuals, brachialis is supplied by musculocutaneous and radial. So, you call this as hybrid muscle. Clear? All of you are clear with this? Yeah. Next important thing. Next important thing is that we, there is no need for us to discuss all the muscles. We will just discuss two muscles here. Biceps brachii and triceps brachii. These two differences are very important. Look here now. Look here. Now in this scapula, in this scapula, here, if you look at the scapula, this is your glenoid cavity. Now, in this glenoid cavity, here you have got supraglenoid tubercle and here you have got infraglenoid tubercle. Okay. This is supraglenoid tubercle and this is infraglenoid tubercle. The same thing I am showing it to you here. This is supraglenoid tubercle and this is infraglenoid tubercle. Okay, now I am discussing about biceps brachii. In biceps brachii, what did I tell you? We have got two heads, short head and long head. Now look here very carefully. Short head arises, short head arises from the coracoid process. Short head arises from the coracoid process. This is your coracoid process. Short head arises from the coracoid process. This is called as your short head. Okay, whereas long head Long head arises from the supraglenoid tubercle. Supraglenoid tubercle cell long head aiga. Long head arises from supraglenoid tubercle. Now both of them will form a muscle like this and they will insert to radial tuberosity. They will insert to a tuberosity on the radius. This is called as radial tuberosity. Radial tuberosity. Clear? So, short head is arising from coracoid process. Long head is arising from, sorry, supraglenoid tubercle, right? Is arising from supraglenoid tubercle. And where is it inserting? It is inserting to radial tuberosity. Radial tuberosity. This is an important thing which you need to know. Okay. Now, can anyone tell video stuck? Okay, Nanta Chudu. Is the video clear now? Is the video clear?
yeah so look here radial fibrosity why am i stressing on this point is that guys previously they have directly given a image right they have directly given a image and they pointed at this radial fibrosity and asked what is the insertion point of this muscle so first of all you should know the name of the muscle then you should know what is its inserting to only two muscles are asked radi uh, this one biceps as well as the triceps okay and one very important thing you need to remember is that obviously biceps is responsible for flexion but the most important thing you have to know is that this biceps muscle this biceps muscle is the strongest supinator you know there is something called pronation supination right this is pronation supination strongest supinator is your biceps muscle keep this thing in mind biceps is your strongest supinator biceps is your strongest supinator now let us go on to the next muscle that is your triceps muscle okay now triceps muscle has got how many heads we have got long head we have got medial head we have got lateral head okay now look from where does long head originate from long head originates from the infraglenoid tubercle from the infraglenoid tubercle the long head will originate then where does the medial head originate from medial head will originate superior to the radial groove you see here we have got something called as radial groove right this black one you can see here this is called as your radial groove above the radial groove the medial head will start below the radial groove the lateral head will start okay so above the radial groove the medial head below the radial groove the lateral head so from all these three places all these three places this is the muscle that is coming on the back this is called as your triceps muscle okay so let us write down all these things long head starts from infraglenoid infraglenoid tubercle sir why not supraglenoid because supraglenoid is biceps medial head is superior to radial groove superior to radial groove lateral head is inferior to radial groove inferior to radial groove everyone clear guys we are done discussing the muscles of the arm now everyone is clear with this yeah yeah now now concentrate on one thing concentrate on one thing in if 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 you are uh, students who are preparing for neat pg for you it will be useful students who are mbbs for you also it will be useful what is the question is that in inset exam recently they have asked this question what is that question which they have asked is that look here very carefully see this is proximal this is distal okay biceps is attached here for example if the tendon of the biceps if the tendon of the biceps in the proximal region if this tendon is torn away if there is a tear in the tendon or let us say if the tendon is cut i have manually cut down the tendon what will happen where will the biceps go the biceps will be dragged downwards it will be dragged downwards so when i flex my arm i mean when i flex like this and my flex my elbow the deltoid the the biceps muscle i can see it here in the form of a lump why because it is not in the center why because here it is torn away the tendon is torn away right if you look at the muscle here look here how is this muscle the tendon here is torn away the tendon here has been torn away there is a rupture of the tendon so the muscle moved downward like this this type of muscle is called as popoi muscle you know the popoi the sailor man so this muscle is called as popoi muscle popoi muscle popoi muscle is because of the proximal biceps tendon rupture popoi muscle is because of the proximal biceps tendon rupture right so 20 more minutes guys and 20 25 more minutes we shall finish up the session okay so you understood it right very good we are done with the muscles of the back we are done with the muscles of the scapular region we are done with the muscles of the arm 
now the most difficult muscles are your muscles of your forearm are you ready with me naresh triceps insertion is on to the olecranon process okay it is inserted to the olecranon process on the back it is not important that's why i did not tell you right so let us enter into the muscles of the forearm all of you all of you don't write anything now look here muscles of the forearm this is my anatomical position here also i have got flexor muscles here i have got extensor muscles okay now all the flexor muscles are originating from one point that is medial epicondyle for example if i am putting this bone like this okay i think this is the left side bone so if i am putting this bone like this this is medial epicondyle this is lateral epicondyle all my flexors are originating from the medial epicondyle all my extensors on the back they are originating from the lateral epicondyle clear flexors medial epicondyle extensors lateral epicondyle okay if there is a inflammation of medial epicondyle then all my flexors will suffer if there is a inflammation of lateral epicondyle then all my extensors will suffer so from today onwards if i ask you common flexor origin medial epicondyle common extensor origin lateral epicondyle i think this explanation is clear for you right so in the anterior group anterior or flexor posterior or extensor posterior or extensor okay now in the anterior group we have got two important things one is superficial another one is the deep group muscles now what are these superficial muscles muscle number 1 muscle number 1 again i am not telling you that this is medial epicondyle that is common flexor origin medial epicondyle common flexor origin this is lateral epicondyle common extensor origin medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle one is common flexor one is common extensor origin okay now the first muscle first muscle all the muscles will originate from medial epicondyle so the first muscle is also originating from medial epicondyle Orig origin is done this is origin when it comes to insertion where it is inserting it is inserting onto the anterior side but onto which bone it is inserting onto the radius bone okay can i tell it is inserting onto the anterior surface of radius anterior surface of radius okay anterior surface of radius done this muscle is called as pronator teres pronator teres why are you calling it as pronator teres because this muscle is responsible for pronation not supination it is only pronation okay that is why it is called pronator teres let us go on to the next muscle look at this this muscle is also originating from medial epicondyle this muscle is also originating from medial epicondyle but look here very carefully that this muscle originates from the medial epicondyle this muscle originates from the medial epicondyle now this muscle passes all the way onto the radial side it is passing onto the radial side and coming down all the way towards the carpal bones on the radial side right so the, here we have got the carpal bones this is the radial side carpal bones this is the ulnar side carpal bones so the muscle is going all the way all the way towards the radial side of the carpal bones so what is this muscle called as it is coming from the flexor origin so flexor it is going towards the carpal bones so carpi on to the radial side so radialis it is called as flexor carpi radialis as you can look in the picture this is called as flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi radialis because it is going on to the other side next important muscle next important muscle this muscle also starts from the medial epicondyle like this and this muscle has got a short belly but the tendons of this muscle are too long guys they are too long like this and they are attaching to this green color thing what is this green color thing here this is called as flexor retinaculum flexor retinaculum so these tendons are attached to flexor retinaculum 
Now, where is this flexor retinaculum? Question number one. Flexor retinaculum is located in the palmar region, right? Like this. Somewhere here, flexor retinaculum is located. And this muscle is having long tendons. So, the name of the muscle is palmar longus. Palmaris longus. Palmaris longus. Okay? Clear, everyone? Palmaris longus. Next important muscle. Next important muscle. But before going to that important muscle, one very important clinical point I want to tell you here is that, look here. This is the palmaris longus, right? So, this is the tendon of palmaris longus. One, two, three, four. Tendons of palmaris longus, right? I told you because palmaris longus is having four very long tendons. So, these are the tendons of palmaris longus. But the important thing is that in between these tendons, we have got a fibrous tissue like this. We have got a fibrous tissue in between these tendons. This fibrous tissue is called as palmar eponeurosis. Palmar eponeurosis. Palmar eponeurosis. Now, why, what I am trying to tell you? What I am trying to tell you is that, look here, the medial side of the palmar eponeurosis. This is the medial side, right? The medial side of the palmar eponeurosis. Here, within this tissue, there is a lot of fibers getting deposited. A lot of fibers. A lot of fibrous tissue gets deposited there. When a lot of fibrous tissue gets deposited there, what will happen? The tissue there, it will become so stiff. So, when it will become so stiff, look at the picture below. This is how the patient's hand looks. When the tissue becomes so stiff, this is how the patient's hand looks. This is because of the contraction of palmar eponeurosis on the medial side. This is because of the contraction of palmar eponeurosis on the medial side. Can anyone tell what is this condition? Very good. Bruce Wayne, perfect. All the first years guys, are you understanding guys? First year students and third year, fifth, sixth semester students. Are you understanding or it is boring? Yeah. Termin for understanding, right? You are understanding, right? Everyone, fine guys. So, this condition, this condition, guys, I want you to keep on messaging me whenever I ask you whether you are understanding because uh, it is obviously of no use if you don't understand this thing, right? So, in between, I will be asking you. So, this is called as Eupoetrens contracture. Eupoetrens contracture. Eupoetrens contracture, right? So, guys, everything that is related for your next exam, every point, whatever I am teaching you, I am relating it with the clinical because clinical is the main agenda. It is a main funda of the examiner who is setting the paper for next exam. Keep this thing in mind. Keep this thing in mind. Yes, Bruce, it is also seen in uh, liver cirrhosis also you see this condition. Okay. Right. So, you understood what is Jupiter's contracture. Right. So, let us continue. Now, look here. There is another muscle that is uh, obvious it will start from the flexor origin. This goes all the way now. It is going towards the ulnar side, you see. It is going towards the ulnar side, towards the carpal bones on the ulnar side and it is inserting here. So, flexor, carpi onto the ulnar side. So, ulnaris. This is called as flexor, carpi, ulnaris. This muscle is called as flexor, carpi, ulnaris. Very good, Akshay. Very good. Flexor, carpi, ulnaris. Next important thing. What is the next important thing? Look here very carefully. This is your radius bone and this is your ulna bone. Okay. On the surface of ulna, you have got a small process. This process is called as coronoid process. This one is called as coronoid process, not coracoid process, coronoid process. Okay. From the coronoid process, there is a small ligament that is attached to another oblique line. On the radius bone, you have got an oblique line, right? Now, this is called as oblique line of radius. This is called oblique line 
of radius oblique line of radius so this ligament that is attached from coronoid process to the oblique line of radius this ligament is like an arch so this is called as an arcuate ligament what is this ligament called this ligament is called as arcuate ligament now from this arcuate ligament the muscle starts coming down and this muscle is nothing but this muscle which is shown here so here you have got here you have got your arcuate ligament like this and from here you see a muscle that is hanging down this muscle very very good very good this muscle is called as flexor digitorum superficialis why flexor because we are discussing flexor muscles why digitorum because this muscle is inserting to all the digits all the digits you see there it is inserting to the, the digits of 1 2 3 4 5 phalanges right why superficial is because right now we are concentrating on the superficial group muscles clear flexor digitorum superficialis one very important mcq i want you to remember here is that flexor digitorum superficialis inserts to which phalanx See, this is called as distal phalanx this is called as proximal phalanx and this is called as the middle phalanx middle phalanx okay so it is inserting to the middle phalanx here it is inserting to the middle phalanx very good guys so this is an important mcq which they will confuse it is inserting to middle phalanx okay so this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 clear everyone right so so guys so what i am trying to tell you is that we shall write down the names sir how do you remember because it is very difficult many muscles are there simply remember it as simply remember it as p f p f p f p f right is it difficult to remember p stands for pronator teres pronator teres f stands for flexor carpi radialis again p stands for palmaris longus palmaris longus which is attached to flexor retinoculum you remember it next again f stands for flexor carpi ulnaris okay sir again there is p no there is no p this time there is f what is this f flexor digitorum superficialis sir if there is flexor digitorum superficialis why not flexor uh, digitorum profundus all of you remember first year students profundus means deep superficialis means superficial okay you cannot you cannot call it as flexor digitorum deep alis is flexor digitorum profundus so opposite of flexor digitorum superficialis is flexor digitorum profundus okay flexor digitorum profundus again the same pf what is p next pronator quadratus pronator quadratus Again, what is F? Flexor pollicis longus. I will tell you what is that. Okay. So, let us go back to the pictures. Let us go back to the pictures. Now, here you have got another muscle. Look here. This is the muscle that is coming down all the way like this. It is coming down all the way. And it is, it is also having 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 tendons. Previous muscle is also having 4 tendons. This is also having four tendons. But what is the difference? That is attached to mid middle phalanx. But here it is attached to distal phalanx. It is attached to distal phalanx. This is a very, 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 very important MCQ. It is attached to distal phalanx. And this is flexor digitorum profundus. Okay. Flexor digitorum profundus. Sir, what is this muscle then? You see, there is one more muscle here like this. This is a separate. Then what is this muscle then? There is one more muscle you can see here. This is a separate muscle. And it is attached only to the thumb. Right? It is attached only to the thumb. Look here. First of all, what this muscle has to be called? Flexor muscle. Flexor. What do you call thumb in Latin? In Latin you call it as pollicis. Thumb in Latin you call it as pollicis. Okay? flexor pollicis and the tendon is too long so longus so this muscle is simply flexor pollicis longus flexor pollicis longus right 
क्लियर आई होप वी आर डन विद द डिस्कशन ऑफ द सुपरफिशियल एंड डीप मजल्स ऑफ द फोराम ओके डीप मजल्स ऑफ द फोराम नाउ आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड बट दैट देर आर मेनी मजल्स दैट आर लोकेटेड इन द फोराम सो हाउ टू रिमेंबर द नर्व इनर्वेशन फॉर ईच एंड एवरी मजल इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिमेंबर द नर्व इनर्वेशन फॉर ईच एंड एवरी मजल बट वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट रिमेंबर दिस स्टेटमेंट ऑल द मजल्स ऑफ एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट anterior compartment are superficial and deep muscles all the muscles of anterior compartment are supplied by median nerve except one and a half muscle okay again i'm telling you all the muscle origins and insertions akshay are not uh, needed okay whatever are needed i'll be telling you all the muscles of anterior compartment are supplied by median nerve except one and a half muscle look here all muscles of your anterior compartment are supplied by median nerve median nerve except one and a half muscle what is that one and a half muscle that one muscle is flexor carpi ulnaris that half muscle is medial half of medial half of flexor digitorum profundus flexor digitorum profundus okay so we have discussed flexor carpi ulnaris right where is that muscle flexor carpi ulnaris it is not supplied by median nerve it is supplied by ulnar nerve ulnar nerve how to remember ulnaris ulnar nerve next flexor digitorum profundus flexor digitorum profundus if you divide this flexor digitorum profundus into two halves look here this is called as the lateral half okay and next this is called as the medial half the medial half is supplied by ulnar nerve lateral half is as usually supplied by your median nerve one and a half so both of them are supplied by ulnar nerve is it difficult to remember these muscles of the anterior compartment guys posterior or dead is it than this is it difficult to remember have you understood all the muscles ritika part 1 is already uploaded right easy easy right right guys right look here now this question is asked again and again what is this question if there is a tendon that is going like this if there is a tendon that is going like this i should call this tendon as flexor tendon or extensor tendon tell me flexor or extensor extensor flexor very good flexor i'm turning back if there is a tendon that is going like this i should call it as flexor or extensor on the back extensor very good because i told you starting these are flexors these are extensors done now look at this picture now you tell me the flexor tendon is broken or extensor tendon is ruptured tell me flexor tendon is ruptured or extensor tendon in this picture yeah extensor piyush very good because it is on the back here right so this is extensor tendon so there is extensor tendon rupture right look at the next picture this is the first picture look at the next picture along with that extensor tendon a part of bone has also been broken down so you call this as evolution fracture evolution fracture of what evolution fracture of extensor tendon extensor tendon 
okay such type of fracture when you look at the patient the patient's finger looks like this right this is called as swan neck deformity like a swan neck the finger is located right this is called as swan neck deformity what is this called this is called swan neck deformity swan neck deformity so evolution fracture of extensor tendon is leading to swan neck deformity such type of fracture you call it as mallet finger you call it as mallet finger or you can also call it as baseball finger baseball finger while playing baseball the digits here they are mostly injured mallet finger or baseball finger very 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 important very very important i'm telling you okay now let us put everything opposite to this everything opposite to this what is the opposite thing extensor tendon here but opposite is flexor tendon if flexor tendon is ruptured or evolution fracture with flexor tendon evolution fracture with flexon flexor tendon right that is called as jersey finger okay so you have to know you have to know the difference what is the difference extensor tendon is mallet finger flexor tendon exactly here flexor tendon that is called as jersey finger jersey finger jersey finger okay sir how to remember it how do you remember how do you remember is that jersey what is jersey jersey is a cow now how do you take the milk of the cow you don't climb on the uh, cow and take the milk right you go beneath the cow and then take the milk so beneath beneath the lower part is always jersey remember in this way right if you have any other ways that is well and good right but this is all the way i got clear now yeah look at this x-ray here now tell me is it a mallet finger or is it a jersey finger you will tell me mallet or jersey very good excellent guys excellent excellent this is jersey finger this is called as jersey finger right now coming to extensors so extensors are very easy now how these how do you understand these extensors first important point first muscle from the brachium from the brachium brachium means this okay from the brachium to the radius brachioradialis from the brachium to the radius brachioradialis first muscle finish second muscle second muscle is extensor point where is this extensor point this is flexor point lateral epicondyle is extensor point from here right from here the muscle is going all the way straight on to the radial side it is crossing the carpal bones on the radial side and it is inserting here so this is called extensor as it is going to the carpal bones carpi on to the radial side radialis extensor carpi radialis iska tendons bahut lamba hai so longus okay extensor carpi radialis longus when i tell longus there will be brevis extensor carpi radialis brevis i will write down all of them don't worry next important point from the extensor point from the extensor point a muscle is coming like this all the way and attaching to your digits extensor digitorum because it is attaching to the digits next another muscle is coming all the way from the extensor point and attaching to your little finger little finger in latin you call it as digiti minimi so this muscle is extensor digiti minimi extensor digiti minimi next important muscle from the extensor point it is coming all the way to the ulnar side and going above going above and inserting here extensor carpi ulnaris because on to the ulnar side it is crossing the carpal bones extensor carpi ulnaris 
Clear everyone? Let us write down all of them now. Okay? The first muscle. Brachium to radius. Brachioradialis. Brachioradialis. Next, extensor carpi radialis longus. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. Extensor digitorum. Extensor digiti minimi. Right? We have also discussed extensor carpi ulnaris. And there is one last muscle. One there is last muscle that is called as anconius. Anconius which is also called as screwing muscle. Which is also called as screwing muscle. Sir, ab iska bhi nerve innervations yaad karna rakha. The nerve innervating all your extensor muscles is only one nerve that is your radial nerve. Radial nerve is the only one nerve that is innervating all your extensor muscles. All your extensor muscles are innervated by radial. Shaukat, love you too, Shaukat. All of them are innervated by radial nerve. So, guys, have you understood everything? Right? Uh, regarding the muscles of the hand, regarding, regarding the cubital fossa, Right, regarding the spaces of the hand and finally regarding the brachial plexus and the upper limb arterial supply. Okay, all of this we shall be discussing in the next class and most probably by next class we shall finish up the upper limb and then we shall start the lower limb. Okay, we shall start the lower limb. So, so far whatever I have taught you guys today, so far whatever I have taught you, are you all clear? I just want to know. I just want to know. Whether are you are clear with all of this, right? I hope more. I hope the faculty who are teaching you might have uh, discussed all these topics. So this would be a revision for you. So even this would help you like a revision, right? So it might be helping you. So are the explanations, are the notes, everything is clear, guys? Next slide is tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the physiology class, okay? Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So guys, whatever group you are in, whatever, gr uh, they, whatever group you are in, I think you are in some kind of group, right? WhatsApp group. So I want, please put your feedbacks in that group about this class, okay? So whether you loved it or is there anything that I could change, so everything if you put it in that group so based upon that i would follow and teach okay so don't forget to uh, write down your review definitely write down your uh, review as well as everything that needs to be done okay the class is fine then write it fine or whatever it is so guys thank you so much for your patience thank you so much for listening to my class and i think i'm telling you guys this will be mostly enough whatever i'm teaching it will cover all your mcqs you need not to worry you need not to have a second thought process of studying another book or material okay this will cover all of them if you want once you finish it up and then uh, you can uh, look at the mcqs guys all of them will be covered mostly okay so thank you guys thank you so much goodbye and good night